So I'm here today with attorney Paul McGrady. And Paul, can you tell me a little bit about what type of attorney you are? I'm a really good attorney. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what type of matters yeah. and problems do you help solve your, for your clients? So I'm a trademark attorney. So a lot of what I do um, involves trademark litigation and involves trademark prosecution, clearing marks, protecting those marks from uh, infringing uses of third parties. Um, I've developed a reputation in the space as someone who is heavily involved in the internet and domain name um, enforcement. Um, I'm heavily active in ICANN, involved in policy development, but also uh, contractual compliance issues and things of that nature. And so um, clients come to me oftentimes, at least initially, uh, for help dealing with uh, an online uh, infringement or counterfeiting problem. So what happens when a company finds that their products are being sold online, but not by them, but knockoffs and other products that might have fake labels on. Do you handle any of those type of projects? Sure, those things come up uh, all the time um, uh, in this practice. So uh, there's a couple of different things. Sometimes they're being sold online uh, through uh, websites that the infringers own themselves. Um, that is one track. Uh, other times they show up on various sales platforms and that's handled by a, a completely different track. Should we talk about both a little bit? Sure. So when it comes to uh, websites that uh, the infringer may own themselves. That's very often handled with takedown notices to hosts. Um, it's uh, back in the day when, when who was, was uh, as uh, more accessible than it's going to be in the future, and we can talk a bit about that too. Um, you, you would use uh, who is searches. You would run reverse registrant searches, find out the, the full universe about the bad guys we're up to, uh, more hosting takedowns, maybe a UDRP complaint, which is an informal domain name complaint on the papers only. Um, and then sometimes you'd have to go in and file uh, lawsuits either for trademark infringement or cyber squatting or both, just depending on the facts of the case. Um, but as I mentioned, who is this changing? We can talk a bit about that. Paul, can you tell me a little bit more about the platform issues? Sure, so the platform issues are different than in the cases where the uh, bad guy owns a domain name himself. The bad guy may be uh, taking uh, advantage of um, legitimate platforms to sell um, infringing uh, counterfeit goods. In those cases, those, many of those platforms will have a notice and takedown mechanism. Those are not meant to be used just to keep your trade channels clear, but rather to be used to report actually infringing counterfeit um, materials and, and sales to have those taken down. Uh, if you have repeat offenders, it can get a little messier because you do ultimately need to find out uh, who they are. Um, and unlike domain names, um, who have up until very recently had a, a predictable who is framework, uh, the platforms don't have anything like that. Let's, let's say you identify a website that is selling your clients products. How have you gone about unmasking those entities in the past when they're hidden behind proxies? Sure. Not? So historically, um, I've, had, I've had really great relationships with many of the pro proxy privacy providers. A lot of them are legitimate outfits that um, have a mechanism by which you can alert them to a concern. Um, and either they write to their customer directly um, and tell them to contact you, or they may even reveal the underlying customer information, depending on how egregious the situation is. However, those proxy providers are moving into a new era where the European privacy law is going to dramatically change what information ICANN will allow uh, the privacy proxy provider to disclose and to whom. Great. So hide my stuff might not actually work or whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, in the coming months, um, we are going to be seeing uh, registrars, many of whom um, have privacy proxy services, implementing ICANN's new proposed uh, GDPR compliance model. And that model basically boils down to this. Uh, there will be essentially almost every domain name will be hidden behind some sort of privacy proxy service. And brand owners who are concerned about abuse of their trademarks, either in the domain name or on the content of the website, will have to try to get access to that who is information through an accreditation process. The problem is, is that GDPR compliance begins in May uh, with stiff penalties, but there's so far no accreditation process that ICANN has even sketched out. And so we may be going into a period of time where there truly is a blackout of who is between when who is is shut off and when accreditation begins. 
Um, and that will be an interesting time because brand owners will have no choice but to go to court, issue subpoenas, try to get records from the registrars and the privacy proxy services, um, and then um, engage um, in um, forensics experts to um, come in and try to help them determine the entire universe of the infringing uh, actors, um, domain name portfolio and things like that, track them back through credit card uh, issues, uh, IP addresses, you name it. So the good old days of who is are winding down. And Paul, just so, so you remember, as part of our practice, we often can unmask people online by looking at other data. Uh, operators often point to their websites from various places. Uh, they get lazy, they'll use the same DNS servers, they'll use the same mail routing services, and oftentimes we've been able to unmask people even when the legal means can't identify them. But you know, when it really comes down to it, once you get your, your, your hands on the entity, uh, what have you had to do to get the court to allow you to do forensics to inspect the computers? Well, I mean, that's, that's fairly straightforward, right? Because we're usually talking about, you know, demonstrably bad guys um, and, you know, going in and um, essentially seeking discovery orders um, to have the computers turned over to be looked at um, is, is, you know, fairly straightforward these days. Um, several years ago, it was not quite as common as it is now. But we're going to see an uptick in that kind of thing because uh, without easy access to who is, therefore leading to easy, you know, easy UDRP complaints uh, to deal with the problems, you know, essentially in a whack-a-mole fashion. Uh, once a brand owner is forced to go to court, uh, they've already gone through the effort of being there. They're going to try to get uh, the full resources of the court behind them and trying to make the infringing material stop. You mentioned before GDPR and its impacts on your process. Can you tell, tell us a little bit more about how that's going to impact your clients in the coming year as it relates to internet domain disputes? Sure, so back in, back in the day, and I mean last month, <laughs> it was easy to uh, con conduct a WHOIS search on a domain name, um, figure out the email address, then do a reverse registrant search on that email address, um, and uh, essentially take a look at the entire portfolio and understand the universe of problem that you're having with a particular bad guy. And that would also draw out uh, uses by that particular bad guy of third party marks, which was a bad faith factor uh, for uh, the UDRP complaint that helps you win your um, UDRP arbitrations. Um, but as I've mentioned, uh, a lot of that easy access is essentially going away. And so from now, in order to uh, prove um, the, the, you know, the kinds of bad faith, uh, multiple infringements that were you know, easy to prove, just a few weeks ago, um, unless ICANN uh, confirms that the tiered access accreditation uh, process will result in searchable who is data, um, you know, that easy method uh, is going to go away. And it is, we're going to have to figure out how to do that um, by piecing together information. Like you mentioned, Lee, that um, you know, you're able to go in and see where the bad guys are pointing, what DNS records they have. Um, but of course, that's a bit more work than just a simple reverse registrant search. So, um, you know, what 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 is new uh, maybe became a, a little commonplace, but now it's it's back, um, mostly because of how ICANN is handling the GDPR um, uh, law. Well, thank you, Paul, for being on the show today. And if you need to reach Paul, his contact information is available on our blog post at leenewbecker.com. Thank you. Thanks, Lee.